Hi, Rebecca Zung here, and this is part one of a two-part episode on how to successfully litigate with a narcissist. This is part of my entire collaboration with Dr. Romani, the foremost expert on narcissism from the psychological perspective. So we've married the psychological, the legal, and we've come together to bring you a power team so that you have the best possible information and, and the best possible content to help you get through this situation with that narcissist in your life. So if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit subscribe right now, hit the notification bell so that you can be uh, notified when I upload new videos every single week. And you'll wanna make sure that you watch this all the way to the end because then when I upload part two of this very special episode, you will be all caught up on where we are. Okay, so let's dive in. Hi, Rebecca Zung here with you again, and I am the top 1% divorce attorney and the best-selling author of the books, Negotiate Like You Matter, and Breaking Free a Step-by-Step -Step Divorce Guide. And today, we are going to be talking about how to litigate with a narcissist, something I know very well, but I don't usually have uh, one of the top experts in uh, at, in, from the psychologist's perspective with me. And um, so Dr. Romani is here with me today, and we are going to talk about the kinds of things that they do in litigation and what to do about it. So in this second episode in the series, we're going to be talking about this idea of litigating with a narcissist. So I think, you know, again, I'm going to bring the psychology perspective, but again, your genius is in the legal, which I know certainly my subscribers and viewers often don't get that perspective. So from where yours, can you tell us, explain, explain to us what we mean when we say to litigate with somebody? Well, that means that there's a lawsuit going. Mm -hmm. And once the lawsuit is filed, and it could be, you know, uh, 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 very often it's in divorce, and that's obviously mm -hmm. the perspective that I have. But, you know, I've also helped people who, um, are litigating with a business partner, mm -hmm. you know, somebody who you, you've had a business mm -hmm. with and mm -hmm. now you're breaking up and maybe a lawsuit has been filed with that. So litigation means that some the court is involved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in some way and there is, you know, discovery mm -hmm. requests going back and forth mm -hmm. for documents. There may be depositions involved, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. But it just means that there is some kind of a lawsuit involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what any of us know about a narcissist is that first of all litigation is in most cases going to be an unpleasant process regardless of the reason certainly most of all in divorce is that something's not going right so the legal system had to get involved anytime things anytime things don't go right is not when you're going to get the narcissist at their best they're really they're combative fighters i always say narcissists are street fighters mm -hmm. because they're they're fighting for their lives the way they think it anytime mm -hmm. somebody's kind of so anytime someone's honing in on that their sense of insecurity they defend it because mm -hmm. it's so fragile mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so what i found so genius about some of the things you would raise in the conversation we're having is what are the things you need to look out for mm -hmm. when you are litigating with a narcissist and you had this sort of long list of thoughts that that we can build upon mm -hmm. you know i hadn't thought of this some of it i talk about with clients but i hadn't used your terminology because mm -hmm. i'm not an attorney and so i was sort of framing it in these different kinds of ways mm -hmm. but we can see how this personality style is going to make litigation, whether in divorce or anything else, such a nightmarish process mm -hmm. because they don't fight fair. They're naturally no. manipulative. Yep. They are so deeply entitled. Mm -hmm. they're, they're so grandiose and entitled that they literally believe these rules don't apply to them. Like, what is this court that is expecting me to be accountable? Like, they really can't believe that there's a sense that someone's going to hold them accountable. And for people I've worked with who are long-term survivors of narcissistic abuse, they'll often say, this person was never held accountable. That's half the problem. And sometimes for narcissists, it starts when they're kids. They weren't accountable as kids, right. as adolescents, as adults, at work, at home, anywhere. So it's almost like these little monsters that get created that turn into big monsters. Yeah. So can you lay out, because I'm curious, what these things are that narcissists do in litigation that make it so difficult? Well, so the first one is that they're going to try to win at all costs. And we talked about this a little mm -hmm, bit yeah. at, um, in another video. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not for a narcissist, then you are against them. In mm -hmm. their world, yeah. 
Yeah. You know, you you are one or the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't be both. It can't be that we're just nicely going our mm -hmm. own directions and it's, you know, we can come up with some kind of middle of the road agreement. You're not dealing with a rational person. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you have to remember that this person is probably going to be out to get you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's really kind of hard to say that mm -hmm. because, you know, this person will want to hurt you. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. will want to get you in some way. And um, winning to them is not what winning might be to mm -hmm. you. It mm -hmm. may not be yeah. the rational thing. Y even if you just, if they give you three choices of something to, that, of, to choose from as far as settling the case, you say, okay, I'll pick number two. Well, now it's changed, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And I tell people that all the time, you know, mm -hmm. that, you know, a, a lot of times people will say, well, maybe we can just settle this between attorneys. You know, I'll send over uh, a letter with my idea for a settlement, mm -hmm. and then the attorney will review it, and then they'll talk it over with the client, and then they send over mm -hmm. their idea for a settlement. But you're, you're, you're like trying to catch a wave and pin it down. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. as soon as you send that over, first of all, they probably won't respond at all. Mm -hmm. um, just even getting them to respond because now you're trying to control the process. Yes, so, yes, yes. So yes, yes. they probably won't even yeah. respond. Mm -hmm. But if they do respond, it's going to be something so ridiculous that you're not going to agree to it. Even if they agree to it in a conversation in your house or something and you mm -hmm. think that you're just memorializing mm -hmm. what you've agreed to, or you think you've agreed to a particular piece of the case, like, well, we agreed that this was going to be how we settle our assets. And then you send over that exact agreement. Well, now they've changed their mm -hmm, mind. But mm -hmm. they blame you. They're going to blame you for changing their mind. Well, it's because you changed on this. It's because you did this. You know, they're constantly projecting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So whatever their bad behavior was. And by the way, when you're dealing with narcissists who are the cause of the breakdown of the marriage, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. they cheated or whatever, yeah, whatever yeah. the projection is 10 mm -hmm. times worse than mm -hmm. anybody else. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, projection's a defense that's designed to protect the psyche. So projection's always going to get magnified when the person actually feels culpable. If they're to blame for something for real, I mean, as it is, projection's going to happen on a day-to-day -day basis because they don't like themselves. But a lot of what you're describing, you go ahead and agree and they send it back and basically say no, is gaslighting. Mm -hmm. I didn't agree to that. Like, but you did, you know, and that's your whole life. I mean, right. I think in many ways what I want to tell people, especially when you're going through a divorce process and that, that form of litigation, this is actually going to be a replay of your entire relationship on steroids. Magnified. That's it. That's yes. all it is. So it's everything that was done there. And I think, again, the biggest struggle on my side of things is working with people. And they say, I can't believe you did this. And to which we both say, why not? This is exactly what we would have expected right. them to don't do. Don't be surprised yeah. when they lie. Mm -hmm. Don't be surprised when they manipulate everything that you say mm -hmm. or do. Uh, I just had a client last week. We have um, an agreement where the parties will do all of their communicating through an app. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a, yeah. a co-parenting mm -hmm. app yes. that they're supposed mm -hmm. to use. Well, this guy sends my client, I'm representing the wife, mm -hmm. a text through the app mm -hmm. that says, this is to confirm our conversation that we just had when I picked up the child at your house, that you agree that I get the child on your time sharing time next Saturday. Thanks for agreeing to that. That conversation never it happened. happened. It's Catholic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> never yep. Yep. happened. Mm -hmm. My client is freaking out. Like, mm -hmm. What do I say to that? I say, you respond. As we agreed, all conversations take place right uh, here in this mm -hmm. app, and you mm -hmm. never asked me that, and that conversation mm -hmm. never took place. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. You know. And then what they, the narcissist then does as part of the larger gaslighting landscapes, they'll say, really? Are you so petty that this is what it's, it's, it's come down to this, that we have to use the little app, and they'll have contempt for the app. And then the, and what happens is the person who is the narcissist abuse victim will, doesn't want to be viewed as petty. I mean, we uh, listen, somebody who's being abused by a narcissist also has their sense of identity. And you know, when you do have to make sure every I is dotted and every T is crossed, and it's your day-to-day -day life, and it's your kids, you know, that's where, and that's where, what I always say that what takes, a, a, what, why narcissistic relationships happen and have these horrible endings is this sort of gradual creep. It's that 
it's all right, fine, all right, yes, okay, you told me, yeah, she wants to do it. And then you agree to that one time out of the app, and now you're off to the races. So that kind of gradual limit testing, and I say this, I actually say this in my book, um, in my most recent book, you know, a relationship with a narcissist is death by a thousand cuts because it's just every little thing that happens over time that you just relent and you agree, and you're like, oh my gosh, and I can't have to believe this is happening. But it's things like, no, you hold your ground, we said the app. And if that makes you feel like, ick, am I being too rigid? No, it's the only way you're going to survive this process. That's a very good point. So yeah. boundaries is one of mm -hmm. the things yeah. that I actually, mm -hmm. uh, is my antidote to a lot of these things. And that is, you know, and sticking to your word. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. mean, and, and a lot of times, by the way, in litigation, you know, especially if it's a, a, a post-judgment litigation. So you've already now been divorced mm -hmm. and you're asking mm -hmm. now for more child support or you're asking to modify or you're asking to enforce the agreement in some way, they really go to great lengths to get you to drop that litigation mm -hmm. and uh, because they don't think it's necessary or whatever. And so even if they are $30,000 behind on their child support or, you know, even if they're wrong, they're going to try to get you to drop that litigation. And what I'm going to say to you is if you drop the litigation, now you have defined yes. that, you know, that that's how far they need to go. Mm -hmm. So next time they're going to be go farther. that much worse. Mm -hmm to get you to give in. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're defining, it's, mm -hmm. it's really like behavior modification it's for exactly narcissists. And, and the, but the challenge is that the behavior, unlike a dog or a cat or a child, where you can make an impact through behavior modification, it doesn't work with narcissists. So you're not, it's not so much behavior modification as much as putting down a hard and fast boundary. It's a bit like letting a kid cry it out to sleep. Like it's the most painful thing you go through because it feels uncomfortable for you. And after a lifetime, years and years, decades and decades, whatever it was, of giving in to the narcissist, it can feel very artificial to all of a sudden change the rules and stand your ground. Because throughout the course of the relationship, most people kept giving in and capitulating right. to the, the narcissist. But the narcissist will be stunned. Oh, absolutely. They, they will be absolutely. put off their game mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you start standing up mm -hmm. to them. Oh, and, absolutely. And, and here's the real secret that's not so secret, and that is the narcissist is actually the most afraid person yes, they are. in the whole yes. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. And so if you stand up to it, sort of like that mm -hmm. bully, uh, you know, I don't know if any of you saw a Christmas story, but you know that bully, like when, when the kid with the glasses actually beats up the bully, the mm -hmm. bully ends up running away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. you, you know, gather enough leverage, mm -hmm. if you put, you know, put together a case with, with the right strategy, mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and it's, it's very methodical, mm -hmm. you know, you have to have patience and you have to have perseverance mm -hmm. in, yeah, in this, yeah. in this process. Mm -hmm. But if you are able to have those two things, you will be able to get what you want. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. not going to be in their face, get what you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Because yeah. when you're litigating with a narcissist, when, when you're negotiating with anybody, mm -hmm. you have to have. Be, both sides want to feel value. That's mm -hmm. why my book is called Negotiate Like You Matter. It mm -hmm. matters an acronym for mm -hmm. the, the process. Mm -hmm. But all people want to feel seen, heard, and know that they matter. Mm -hmm. But narcissists, it's like 50,000 mm -hmm. times more than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be giving value to them as you're asking for something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when you're litigating with a narcissist, you have to, you know, let's say you want him to take, I'm just going to use a him, but it could be a her, um, to take Johnny t for a field trip or something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you say, well, you're so good at whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You're really good at golf and it's a golf field trip. And, you know, and Johnny would love to have mm -hmm. you there mm -hmm. and whatever. So you're getting what you want, but yeah. you're having to. And I know what most of you are thinking. Like, I can't stand the guy. It it's like, I, I, I think he's a jackass, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you have to do a certain amount of massaging of their ego if you want to get right. what you want. Well, I call it narcissistic fluffing. And you've got to become a fluffer if you're going to make this work, folks. Like, you really do. And it is, I always tell people, in fact, I was talking with someone recently, and she really put it nicely. She's like, you got to take a Silkwood shower afterwards. You know, if you remember that movie, the woman who worked in, like, a nuclear plant, and she had to, you have to take these big chemical showers afterwards. I often tell 
tell my clients, after you have to do an episode of narcissistic fluffing, whether in your relationship, in a divorce, at work, I say, please have a ritual you go home to. It might literally be taking a shower or a bath where you're like intentionally like, I am getting this ick off of me that I had to play that game. But it is survivalist. And for a lot of people, they say this doesn't feel authentic. It doesn't feel good. No, these relationships don't feel good. But in some ways it might, you have to have a true north. And that true north could be something your, that your kids need or want. It could be time, like, ultimately, and you know how I feel about this, even with the most difficult narcissistic co-parent, co-parent, if you are never to throw that other parent under the bus. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't do it. You just don't do it. It's too confusing for your kids. When your kids are adults, and come to you and want to call that parent out as a narcissist, that's a whole different conversation. But that's a form of parental alienation, yes. which mm -hmm. is a form of child abuse. Yes. And, yes. and Dr. Amy Beaker, who I've interviewed on my show, so my listeners will recognize mm -hmm. her, she's the foremost authority on parental alienation in the world, and she actually says it's harder for children to get over the effects of parental alienation than it is for them to get over sexual abuse. Wow. It is, I mean, those are her mm. words, not mine. I'm not the psychologist, but it is 100% child abuse. Don't do it mm -hmm. as much right. as you Yes, even, even if it's being done to you, and we're going to be talking about that. Yes. But you talk about other things, too. Like, you, you talk about manipulation and how that impacts the process of litigating. They, they're natural manipulators. It's, remember, when you don't have normal access to empathy or you choose not to use it when you are entitled but you're not skilled enough and not secure enough to make a direct ask you get your needs met through manipulation okay that's why they manipulate they mm -hmm. do not have the skill set to say this is what I want this is what I need you need to value yourself to say this is what I need or want right they don't so they manipulate they, they assume that they won't be able to get what they want yes which is kind of sad when you really yes. think about it yeah but it's not so sad when they start manipulating you that just right. doesn't feel good right. so how do you litigate in the face of being manipulated well and this is gonna sound bad maybe but in some ways you kind of have to manipulate the manipulator mm -hmm. I agree um, mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. and it's sort of like what I just the example I just gave where I said, you know, oh, you're so good at or whatever, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, if they give you choices, you know, maybe clarifying. So, because a lot of times the choice that they're giving you is so unfair mm -hmm. and so stupid. And so you just, you say it back to them like, okay, so if I'm hearing you correctly, what you're asking me to agree to is blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And just sometimes by holding mm -hmm. up that mirror, to them, yes. They, <laughs> yes. they, they know yes. that it Absolutely. sounds ridiculous, yes, it and so yes. they start backtracking yeah. from yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but you have to be very careful because you don't say it with sarcasm. No. You don't say it with, um, with any mm -hmm. emotion. Mm -hmm. You know, if I were to give one biggest piece of advice, and it's the hardest piece to take, is to keep your emotion out of it because you can't take anything personally that they do because mm -mm. they it's not about you. It's not you. about you, it's about them. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, but you know, they'll make it all about mm -hmm. you. But you know, it's really hard not mm -hmm. to take it personally if they're saying, you know, you're a deadbeat dad mm -hmm. or you're a horrible mm -hmm. mother, um, mm -hmm. you know, because you're going to want to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to go, you think I'm a horrible mother? I've been the one. You know, I'm, I'm mm. sitting here with them now. Mm -hmm. I just took mm -hmm. her to the dentist appointment. I just signed her up for soccer. I, mm -hmm. you know, don't, don't, don't mm -hmm. go Don't engage. There. I always say, don't engage. And that, that's a part of I say, don't engage, don't defend, don't personalize, don't explain. That's your sort of narcissistic survival manual that you, all of you have already heard a million times from me. Thanks for watching this very special part one of how to successfully litigate with a narcissist. Watch in the next few days will I, when I will be releasing part two of this episode. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so that you and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I upload part two. Until then, thanks so much for stopping by. If you haven't already, grab my Crush My Negotiation prep worksheet. Below is the link. Make sure you grab that now. And I will see you in the next video. Remember that today is a great day to start negotiating your best life.